Well, maybe you sensed it, that feeling that you're being watched. Well, the state has laws against stalking on the books, making it a felony. Well, what if police don't recognize it? And what if it's a complete stranger who's bothering you? Tonight, Joe Conger and the I-Team investigates. Cynthia Verbeff is moving. Her home, she says, has become a house of horrors. I feel that I've lost my mind. I've lost my life. Incident reports from law enforcement tell the tale. Numerous break-ins at the address. Vandalism to her car, her motorcycle, her computer. Verbeff believes she's being targeted. Everything. They just went through everything. But sheriff's detectives had little to go on because the vandals, though often destructive, stole nothing. Even from her portable safe drilled into and torn apart, the contents, the jewelry, remained untouched. Verbeff says her troubles didn't start until she met these two men. One would become her ex-boyfriend. The other was his partner in a San Antonio pain clinic, Dr. John Hall. Very first time I met him, I, we went to his house on 4th of July. And uh, he told me that because I was already there in his house, I would be the next victim that I was going to be stopped. Verbeff found the doctor's prophecy to be correct. She suffered months of oddness. Coming in through the front door and I touch the doorknob and it just falls into pieces. Lights left on, doors open, furniture moved, her clothes dryer disassembled. Her friends say they noticed the strange happenings. They tell the I team they even witnessed a gas oven left turned on. As soon as you walk in the house, you'd smell gas in the house. So the whole house smelled from gas. So immediately turned it off and opened up the doors. But I mean, that thing doesn't just turn on by itself. And it'd been running for. A good length of time. Or the time Verbeff and a friend say they were stalked at a mall. I saw him following us to several stores, and I would see the man close to us, looking at us. The girls had the presence of mind to snap a photo with their phone. Verbeff says all these happenings culminated in an assault. The 39 year old believes someone drugged the food in her home and returned later to rape her. I know something happened to me because. A woman knows. She filed a report and was briefly hospitalized with signs of sexual assault. Dr. Hall says what Verbeff describes is known as gang stalking. Indeed, he writes about it in his book, A New Breed Satellite Terrorism in America. Verbeff is not alone. Others in San Antonio have contacted the I team and described similar types of occurrences. The urine arsenic is above normal. Uh, we shouldn't have arsenic. Linda Johnson says someone poisoned her water supply with heavy metals in northwest San Antonio. Then there's her story about the bracelet that went missing, then reappeared. Police, she says, have stopped listening to her. And like Verbeff, she too believes she's been sexually assaulted, although she never filed a police report. I've gone to doctors many time, times, and I've been to the Rape Crisis Center for Counseling, yes. Many of these so-called victims of what Hall describes as gang stalking meet up on the Internet, finding comfort and information from others who say they too suffer from electronic stalking, mind control, and even rape. Loosely defined, gang stalking is where organized groups target and harass unwilling victims to the point of paranoia, leaving the victims to deal with skeptical family members and skeptical law enforcement. This isn't stalking done by a, a former spouse or former boyfriend or someone that's, that you know that's just grumbled at you, but stalking that's being done by, by total strangers in an organized fashion. And some internet links take you here to the book mentioned earlier, written by Dr. John Hall. The book is, is fact. Uh, it's not a book of fiction. Um, what I've wrote about is an isolated story here in San Antonio. Dr. Hall it says it is a story about himself and the harassment and rapes his ex-girlfriends allegedly suffered beginning in 1996. Dr. Hall believes the people behind it are well-organized operatives using government satellite technology to terrorize him and other victims. Uh, all voicing the same complaints. Organized stalking, uh, weird electronic disturbances going on in their homes. Um, most of the women are complaining of drugging and sexual assault. So uh, it is a, it's a big national problem. Verbeff bought the book, and what she read, she says, caused her stomach to turn because within the chapters in the story, she found similarities to her own situation. I pulled out the book and I started reading, and I'm like, oh my God, it's exactly what's happening. It's like turning, yeah. the, turning the pages of your own story. Everything. Remember the doors, windows, even the clothes dryer taken apart? Page 35, third paragraph, talks about reassembling appliances. The drugged food and rape? Page 52, talks of concealing rohypnol, the date rape drug, in drinks and food. The account in Hall's book is chilling, and the I team uncovered some truth to his story. San Antonio police reports indicate there was a rape reported in 2007 in the same quad of condos where one of Dr. Hall's girlfriends supposedly lived. 
San Antonio police say the condo rape remains under investigation. And Bear County detectives say Verbeff's assault remains open as well. And although there are some interesting connections to Dr. Hall in the book, law enforcement won't and cannot say if Dr. Hall is even a person of interest. The I team thought the similarities were striking and asked him. Could you, in fact, be the person that's creating this mess for these women? Um, and that's one, actually one of the reasons why I got out of my ex fiance's life um, to make sure that they weren't victimizing her in order to get at me. Dr. Hall says he's been targeted by the same groups. There's mention in the book of a conspiracy by the criminals and by fellow doctors. Dr. Hall says the Texas Medical Board retaliated against him for uncovering the gang stalking. The I team confirmed one local hospital suspended Dr. Hall's clinical privileges for two months in 2006. In 2007, the Texas Medical Board ordered two mental evaluations of Dr. Hall. The first came back normal, but a second evaluation found a probable delusional disorder and ordered psychiatric treatment. And in 2008, Hall's license was suspended, this time when he tested positive for cocaine. In the book, he explains the operatives drugged him with cocaine periodically. Dr. Hall's medical license has since been reinstated. If you look nationwide, almost everyone that complains of this eventually gets sent to a psychiatrist. Uh, the psychiatrists don't look into the technology. They don't do any research into whether or not any of this is possible. With his book published, Dr. Hall is taking his message nationally. He's appeared on cable TV shows. Thank you so much, Dr. Hall. Late night radio. And our guest tonight, Dr. John Hall. And even has his own radio program in the works. There have been several people in my, you know, in my midst, obviously, that have been victimized. But if you look at it on a larger scale, it is a national problem as well. Dr. Hall says the problem is gang stalking, seeking to victimize innocent women and sully his reputation for exposing them. For the I-Team, Joe Conger, KENS 5 Eyewitness News. Dr. Hall's belief is that we all face some sort of terrorism in our lives that is mostly unseen and deadly. He contends criminals are tapping into our government's surveillance systems to gain access to our lives and minds. As for the alleged rapes mentioned in that story, no one has been charged, but both San Antonio police and Bear County Sheriff's deputies say they continue to investigate.